we're going to talk about coronary artery circulation. But before we do, let's uh, get an idea of where our heart is and how big it is and where it sits inside of our body. To do that, take your right hand, make a loose fist, and stick your thumb up just a little bit and put your thumb into the suprasternal notch, that little notch that you feel in the middle of your chest just underneath. If you follow the trachea down, there's that little notch. Put your thumb in there. Let the uh, hand rest down. Put your elbow against the side of your body. And you'll see that your hand is sitting in roughly the, the same appropriate position for where your heart is. It's about as high. It's about as middle in the chest. And you'll see it's on around roughly the same slant that your heart is. So that's about what your heart looks like. Although obviously a little bit more posterior because your heart doesn't sit on your chest. Let's talk about the coronary arteries. That's what I want to focus on. The problem with the coronary arteries is that they're three-dimensional. They surround a roughly circular shape. And whenever we try to draw them, we draw them on a flat piece of paper or a whiteboard, or we project them onto PowerPoint. And it's always kind of confusing because you can't really see how they turn around the sides. So what I'm going to do is instead of using my right hand, I'm going to use my left hand with a little bit of artwork on it to illustrate how the coronary arteries work. So as I go through this talk, follow along with your own left hand. Make a little fist and put your uh, first knuckle so that it's pointing up. I'm going to point down so you can see my hand a little bit more. And you've got two major coronary arteries that perfuse your heart, one on the right side, one on the left, called intuitively the left coronary artery and the right coronary artery. Both of these arteries arise from the aorta from their own holes. So there's one hole in the aorta that the left coronary artery comes out of, and there's one hole in the aorta that the right coronary artery comes out of. If you take a look on my hand, you'll see that I've got written here the left coronary artery, and that's the one we'll start with, the LCA. The LCA comes down, and for a short period, it's just its own straight little uh, artery with no branches, and then it does this major branch into two different arteries. The first artery here is the left anterior descending artery, which comes down over the front of the heart between the two ventricles. So it is also sometimes called the anterior, this is the anterior surface of the heart, anterior intraventricular artery. But LAD is a lot easier. So LAD comes down and circles around the heart a little bit. There's this small diagonal branch that comes off the LAD called, conveniently, the diagonal branch. So LAD comes, or the left coronary artery comes down, LCA, turns here into the LAD, circles around with the diagonal branch coming off. There's another one that comes off as well. Uh, instead of going down the LAD pathway, let's go down around here to this other branch of the left coronary artery, which circles around posteriorly to the back of the heart. This one is called the left circumflex artery. Most often it is called the left circ or the circ. Uh, and it comes around and feeds into the back of our heart. That's the left coronary artery. Now let's take a look at the right coronary artery. Starting here, the RCA starts at the top, again, from its own origin in the aorta, its own sinus, comes down, circles around the heart towards the back. There's one little branch that comes off, and that's the marginal branch along here, which feeds sort of the anterior, inferior margin of the heart. So both of the, the, the right artery and the left artery have little branches that come off. One's called the marginal, one's called the diagonal. An easy way to remember what they are, it's the MD, as in medical doctor. Marginal branch and diagonal branch. Let's keep on going around the right coronary artery to see what's here on the posterior of the heart because the back of our hearts are weird. Uh, we've got, if you take a look here, imagine this is the back of my heart, so it's sitting like this in my chest. This would be the left side, so we've got the left ventricle, which is the larger ventricle here, so anatomically this is, you know, relatively accurate. There's the uh, left ventricle, right ventricle you'll see that there's an artery running between these two ventricles in the posterior part of the heart, which is called, easily enough, the posterior interventricular artery, or the PIA. 
the bottom, this isn't quite anatomical, it should be sort of up a little bit more, but down here you've got something called the atrioventricular node, or the AV node. The AV node is a really important part of the electrical conduction system in the heart. We've got an upper part of the heart called the atria, there's two atria, two chambers at the top, and then the bottom of the part of the heart, which are the ventricles, there's two ventricles side by side. Electrically, the atria and the ventricle are separated by a sheet, which doesn't let electricity go through it. So it's an, ins an electrically insulating sheet called the annulus fibrosis, or the AF. Most of the signals, usually in a healthy heart, all of the signals that make our heart contract start above the AF, above the annulus fibrosis in the atria. They then travel down through the atria through a little hole in the annulus fibrosis, an electrically conductive hole down into the ventricles. That hole is the AV node, the atrial ventricular node, the node that sits right between them. Keeping our AV node alive is really important because it's what allows the electrical messages to go from the top of the heart, where they normally start, down to the bottom. Here's the funky thing about humans. In order to keep our PIA properly perfused, we have to get blood from either the right coronary artery or the left coronary artery. In some people, the PIA is connected to the left coronary artery via the left circumflex. In fact, in about 30% of the people, in the minority of the people, the left coronary artery attaches to the PIA. And in about 70% of the people, the remaining percent of the people, uh, it's the right coronary artery that comes down and attaches to the PIA. Now there is a small percent that have both, and there's actually an even smaller percent, about 4% of the people, where the PIA goes right up to the atria and actually attaches, uh, not to the atria, where it goes up to the aorta and it attaches to the aorta and it's perfused directly from the aorta. That's incredibly rare. For most people, clinically the rule that we use is we say that 70% of the people are right dominant, and 30% of the people are left dominant. So if you have a patient who's having a heart attack and you do a 12 lead and you realize that the heart attack is in you know, this part of the heart, the part that's perfused by the right coronary artery, you should start to think to yourself, uh-oh, if I don't already have them, I'm probably going to be running into electrical problems in the AV node. That's why we really care a lot about this idea of the right dominant or the left dominant, so we can start to predict when we're going to get into trouble with the uh, blood supply and to the AV node, keeping it alive. So, quick review. You've got a left coronary artery and a right coronary artery, both arising from the aorta. And very few people have a posterior one as well, but don't worry about that, that's funky. Left coronary artery comes down and divides into the left anterior descending, and the left circumflex. In about 30% of the people, the circ goes all the way around through to the PIA and perfuses the AV. There's also that little diagonal branch. Right coronary artery arises from the aorta, comes down, there's this little marginal branch, remember MD, marginal diagonal, and circles around, and in most people, 70% of the people, connects with the PIA and thus innervates the AV. There you go. There's your review of coronary arteries. Hopefully, having it in three dimensions helps. Let me modify what I was uh, saying in that lecture, just in particular about the posterior part of the heart. I've redrawn my hand here a little bit. If you take a look, uh, this is the back of the hand, and I've drawn the two atria, and I've drawn the two ventricles on down here. This would be the right atrium with the sinus atrium node and the left uh, atria. This is the uh, right ventricle, left ventricle. I've drawn a line across here, which is the annulus fibrosis. And here, this little dot would be the AV node. So in order to make this a bit more anatomically accurate, if you close your hand, your little finger or your second finger would roughly be sitting where your AV node would inside your heart, if it's a heart-shaped object and your SA node is up here, just at the base of your little finger. So if you put that backwards into your heart, that means that your AV node is up here on the uh, right side of the heart. Left ventricle is down here, big part of the heart there. 
and the annulus fibrosus going across, and the AV node is the connection between the two.